Hello and welcome back to another English revision video. Now guys, if you've been following First Street Tutors for long enough, you will know that we have helped hundreds of students get sevens, eights and nines in the English exams across our GCSE Language Paper 1 and Paper 2 masterclasses, as well as on YouTube and TikTok. Now what I want to do within this lesson is to show you guys the top three best reading and writing strategies when it comes to passing and doing amazingly in language paper two. And what I'm going to be doing to demonstrate this is actually something new on this channel. I'm specifically going to be reviewing the language paper two 2019 exam. However, what I want to do guys is to review actual student exam responses to demonstrate the top three common errors that students make when it comes to the language paper two exams, which lead them to be stuck in grade two and grade three hell, and even maybe language and find themselves really, really struggling with even getting low grades, so low fours, fives. And what I'm going to be showing you guys is solutions, how to easily turn that around and then find yourself getting sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. So let's get started. So paper two tests your ability to compare two non-fiction texts you've never seen before and also write a letter, article or speech. Remember that you have to analyse two sources and write a non-fiction response, so either letter, article or speech, um, and answer five separate questions in one hour, 45 minutes, okay? This is paper two. And remember that, guys, the key to passing any English language paper two exam lies in how you answer these questions. And for English language paper two, every paper has the same structure. Remember that you always get two sections, five questions in total. Now, of course, if you want to see exactly how to write a grade seven, eight and nine answer for this, you can join in my language GCSE paper one and paper two masterclasses, which I hold every Sunday from 5 p.m. In fact, today, this Sunday, I'm gonna be looking at language paper two. And so for just 10 pounds, you're gonna learn how to write grade nine answers and watch me tackle specifically the 2024 language paper two exam step by step. So of course, to sign up, all you simply need to do is click the link in the description. Now, what I'd like to suggest guys, as you're watching this is, maybe pause this video at this point, download this paper, which is available to download off AQA's website. This is paper two, the 2019 exam, as well as the two inserts, and actually try and practice in a complete and actual AQA a practice paper under exam conditions. So use a paper you've never used before, ideally two or different or three different papers if possible. And of course, in this video, I'm going to be looking at just this 2019 exam. I'd like to suggest maybe answer, pause this video at this stage, try and practice this and then look at this video afterwards. Okay. So if I were in your shoes as a student, I'd obviously print this paper and mark it or even have it mark, then once I go over these questions, right? So once I look and tackle question number one, and more specifically, and this is what we're gonna be looking at, questions two, three, four, and five, I would then focus not on the questions that I did well on and got right, but actually the questions I struggled in because this will reveal exactly where I need to improve to get a grade nine. And what I then afterwards do is conduct a post-practice analysis to think of how I can improve. Now in this lesson, what I want to do is actually focus on actual student responses and the top three areas that in paper two, I always see students always perform really poorly on, okay? So let's review the top three problems and use actual student exemplar answers to so that I can demonstrate to you how you can avoid making the same mistakes. And also as you're mocking your own practice question, how you can look out for any of these errors you might have made yourself. Now I wanna talk about the first top problem that students from early on in the paper, start to see that they're losing marks. This is the comparison questions, starting with question number two. So you've decided, okay, I'm actually gonna practice this and I'm gonna review my marks, right? You review your paper and you notice a pattern. You keep actually scoring lo low on the comparison question two and question four. And so this would tell me if I were in your position and I find that I keep on struggling with the question two, especially, this would tell me that I need obviously more practice with comparison questions as I'm doing badly in them, right? So let's look at this question to comparison. And this is an actual written student exemplar for this question, which is use details from both sources to write a summary of what you understand about the different votes. Again, guys, this is the June 2019 paper. Let's have a look. And let's actually look at 
both what the student did well in this paper and where they went wrong, okay? Because as you can see here, actually in terms of the amount that they've written, they've written a good amount, right? For an eight marker. However, they actually ended up getting four out of eight for this response. Where did they go wrong, okay? And also what did they do well? So let's have a look. Now here, the student says, they begin by saying, it's also the boat had been as brand spanking new. So already they're doing well in terms of quoting. So actually I'm gonna use my green pen for the green flags in this response, right? So actually it's really good. They've started off by quoting, right? And they're directly addressing the question. They're getting those AO1 marks in. However, they carry on, okay? So they say, and so say the boat had been as brand spanking new, implying that the boat were in good condition. So already they're starting off with making some punctuation and basic grammar errors and had only just been bought, whereas in source B, the boat had been described as a storm shaken old ship, implying that the boat had been through a lot, which is informal, and is very ancient, which has been misspelt. I wanna first talk about what they've actually done really well, okay? Because I actually think one of the things that students are actually quite poor in when it comes to some of the common errors that I see in question two, and also question four, is the comparative element. This student has actually done really well in talking about both sources within the same paragraph. That's a green flag. Equally, they have quoted from both sources. Great. However, what led them to get four out of eight in this question? Number one, as I've mentioned, some obvious grammar and punctuation errors. However, the more fundamental problem that I can see in both of these two sources that they've mentioned is really poor analysis. They have basically compared a very obvious difference between the two boats, that's great. And of course, that's really, if I'm being completely honest, where those marks have come from. But what have they done? They said, okay, here's the first quotation, brand spanking new, impl implying the boat were in good condition. Well, that's really obvious from this. A more implicit thing that they should maybe pick and read between the lines when they are analyzing the text is maybe, does this demonstrate? Okay, so now here the analysis is very weak, okay? So poor analysis, the lack of um, both implicit and explicit information. This is more so implicit, right? Directly implied, not obvious, okay? That's where the bigger marks and the higher marks reside. If the boat was brand spanking new, does that mean it's actually more modern in, in design? That's something that's maybe um, uh, one, an analytical point that the student could make, an implicit point, that then they could also co contrast with the older Victorian boat, right? So one thing that students tend to do, which loses their marks and makes and limits the marks that they're getting, is they'll, you know, talk about source A. They might even, talk about source B in the same paragraph, great. Then they give a quotation, amazing. But then they then just explain the same thing that we see in the quotation rather than actually saying, okay, actually, what does this demonstrate at a deeper level? What's being unsaid, but I'm going to cleverly pick up on, okay? So that's the first thing. And that's the first key problem area in paper two, weak comparative skills. Now, the second common problem I see in language paper two student responses is poor vocabulary and spelling. And more specifically, students have very poor language, poor vocabulary. They don't include ambitious language, okay? And for this, by the way, guys, I usually give my students in my weekly masterclasses a word of the week. Every single Sunday, I always give them a new ambitious word, defin define what that word is, and then show them how to incorporate it into their writing, okay? In order to help them gradually build up their vocabulary and spelling skills. This takes time, but it can have a huge impact on your overall marks and this is the common problem I see. So let's review another student response related to the 2019 exam. And for this student, they got seven out of 16. So let's see where they went wrong. Let's look at this paragraph. So again, let's have a look at also what they might have done well, but the most important thing is where did they lose those major marks for this 16 marker? Because they got seven out of 16. The question says, compare how the writers conveyed the different perspectives and feelings about the experiences at sea. Okay, so of course, we're thinking about the writers themselves, not obviously the boats, okay? So remember, you're not recycling the same points from four or from two to four, right? And it's the writer's perspectives and feelings and its differences. So what do they say in this um, paragraph? In Source A, the writer's perspective of C was horrifying, a huge danger to him, 
and his friend. Nothing in life could have prepared me for this. This shows that he had a horrifying experience when his boat capsized and he was thrown into the ocean. The now nothing suggests he was scared and shocked at this moment as he was being thrown around in the water. This makes the reader feel sympathetic for the writer as his was scared and also worried about his friend. By the way, guys, this is a different student response. So already I'm seeing Whilst this student, I mentioned this green flag, they've actually talked about two sources in one paragraph because that's comparison. Already the student is only talking about one source in one paragraph because I can see later on they say similarly in source B, the writer talks about blah, 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 blah. However, let me think about firstly the things that they did well, which helped them get those seven out of 16 before going into where there were issues, okay? The first thing that they did well is obviously they are first addressing the first writer. They're addressing part of the question, just a part of it. And they obviously quote, which is great. And they even zoom in, okay? So they do some word level analysis when mentioning nouns. This is all great. And what this is demonstrating, they're doing some, there's some um, attempt at analysis, right? When the student says nothing, um, suggests that he was scared and shocked. So all of these are green flags. However, let's think about the red flags, the issues with this response. Obviously the top one is they are talking about source A in its own paragraph, then source B in a separate paragraph. You need to integrate. So there's little comparison, but more fundamentally, when it comes to vocabulary, spelling, right? They say in source A, the writer's perspective of C, poor spelling, punctuation, and grammar was horrifying. A huge danger, no, you cannot substitute um, connectives and or but for commas, right? So there's really, really um, poor spag points here, okay? So the uh, vocabulary, the spelling is not very good. And then they say, and his friend, nothing could have prepared me for this. This shows this supposed to be a capital letter. So they're making some really basic errors, okay? And here also when they make an error, instead of crossing out the whole word and then writing it again, they just cross out the letter. So there's a lot of poor um, spelling in this response. And also very importantly, there's no comparison with source B, right? And of course, also we can see that they try and make an attempt at some analysis by using words like horrifying, they repeat it again, they use words like scared, but actually instead of saying words like scared, how about petrified, um, frightened, shocked, appalled, um, so words like these are also a little bit more basic, right? And again, guys, as I mentioned in my GCSE weekly Sunday masterclasses, I always have a word of the week that students can use as part of the word bank to increase their ambitious language and vocabulary. Again, guys, remember that your spelling, your vocabulary also plays a significant role in the marks that you get, in addition to obviously making sure you are comparing. Now, the third top problem that a lot of students tend to lose a lot of marks on in language paper two is weak arguments and structure when it comes to question five, which is a letter, article, or speech. Now, when it comes to question number five, and if you find that this is where you're always losing marks, this could indicate number one, when you're writing your uh, question five response, that you maybe have a lack of confidence in structuring and clearly expressing your arguments in response to the topical issue in the exam, or you might not be very familiar with the correct format of the writing piece that you're putting together. You need to be able to distinguish between um, a letter, article, or speech. Now, what's really interesting in this response, which I'm gonna be reviewing, is this was actually part of a much longer response. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but actually the student wrote in lots of detail. However, in this response, right, so this was actually a letter question um, in response to a statement. It's people who have extraordinary skill, courage, determination, deserve to be famous, not those who have good looks or lots of money or behave badly, right? That was a statement. And uh, the student was asked to write a letter to the editor of a newspaper in which they argued their point of view in response to the statement. Out of 40 marks, this question got, got 19 out of 40, right? And in terms of this paper, let's have a look at this response and where they could have scored easy marks to push that up, right? So they're asked to write to the editor. They start off by saying, dear editor, small e, right? So already there, there's some 
errors here when it comes to spag points, spelling, punctuation, and grammar. You remember that this is worth 16 marks for technical accuracy, but let's have a look, right, at this letter in response to this statement. I strongly agree with the statement. Why would people who behave badly deserve to be famous? Okay, so actually this is a green flag, right? So they make the argument quite clear, their perspective and which side of the argument they're on, okay? So actually the perspective is clear. But let's see where they might have been going wrong a little bit. Every year, more than 20% of criminals who commit serious offences become famous due to uh, news broadcast. Again here, spelling, punctuation. However, they've added a made-up statistic. There is thousands and thousands of people out there who work day in, day out to succeed in what they do. What do they get for it? Absolutely nothing. Who are these people? They have not given me any concrete examples. Who are the people that have extraordinary skill, courage, and determination? Are they talking about, for example, doctors? Are they talking about nurses? Are they talking about bin men? I don't know. Again, they've added a really good statistic, which is a green flag once more, right? So they've shown, they've added a persuasive technique. They even added things like rhetorical question, green flag. But what they're now um, starting to lose marks on is this inability to really give the reader a concrete example right and also they're not developing the debate they've literally stopped that example there and that first paragraph there they could have gone in more detail and developed it now they then have a subheading which is not so here we've been told that we're supposed to write a letter right this is not an article an article has subheadings letter has um, the address, the made up address, then the um, referring to the person that's receiving the letter, they've done really well with that. But now they're mixing it up, they're mixing the form by adding a subheading. You don't add a subheading in a letter. So this is also showing a poor awareness of form. Then they carry on. Newspapers should start to focus on the good people in society and not the bad. We see enough of criminals in, this, in the news becoming famous for what they have done wrong. Now here actually they have given a really, really good example, green flag, so I'm gonna use my green um, <laughs> um, pen. Now are they gonna develop this? More people should be interested uh, wrong spelling in reading newspapers if they showed everyone someone else's achievements not people's downfalls this is such a great argument that if i were marking this as a teacher i would be so frustrated they've actually got the good the seeds of a really powerful compelling argument this is such a great example but then they just stop there it's not developed right so really really poorly developed argument and as I said, this is actually a snippet and an excerpt of this student response, the student exemplar. And I'm going to be sharing um, these full student exemplars with my private students in my Sunday GCSE master class so that they can also read these responses in full. However, what actually, even when I was reading through this student response was actually really frustrating me is that this student actually had some really good examples and really good debate points, which even I didn't think about. However, what they stopped at doing was developing that. Remember guys, that for this question, you need to write in more depth and detail, but what you need to do, instead of having lots and lots of short paragraphs, take fewer paragraphs, but develop them in more detail, right? This is how you strengthen your argument. This is how you strengthen your structure of your argument, okay? I hope that makes it clear in terms of where you could be going wrong, maybe in your own writing, say for example, in question five, that's where you tend to find you lose lots of marks. Make sure you have a strong structure in your response. And when you develop one line of argument, develop it in more detail. Don't make it brief before moving on. Give concrete examples, make up your statistics, your anecdotes, your counter arguments and your examples, okay? And lastly, if you want to mark your work and you're unsure how to, join in my Sunday masterclasses where I usually go through the mark scheme for every single past paper question that I go over with my class as well as the model answers which I send over to my students and they can use. And as I go through these mark schemes with my students at the end of every class, they then go away knowing exactly what examiners are looking for. And of course, guys, for those of you that actually want slightly more targeted and marked feedback, I'm gonna be launching a marking service fairly soon. And students who are part of my masterclasses are gonna be getting discounted access to marking and marked feedback directly from me, okay? So if you found this video useful, 
Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you'd like even more support, head over to www.firstrate.tutors.com to sign up for my uh, weekly 5 p.m. Sunday masterclass, where I'll be covering language paper two, which is the 2024 locked GCSE exam. So of course, if you wanna know how to sign up, the link is in the description.